On July 21st, 1969, at 3.56 Central European Time, Neil Armstrong became the first person in history to set foot on the surface of the moon and turned us into a species that travels to foreign celestial bodies. Following Apollo 11, 10 more astronauts were set off for Earth's natural companion, but the moon has now been waiting for new human visitors for over 50 years. But why is that? Why has NASA not returned to the moon for half a century? What factors led to the Earth's satellite moving out of the focus of manned space travel? Could these complications also affect future missions? Or have we never actually been to the moon anyway? July 21st, 1969 is forever immortalized in our history books. One small step for man was enough to usher in a new age of space travel and end an earthly feud at the same time. Because we must not forget one thing. NASA's six manned moon landing missions were by no means subject to purely scientific interest. Between 1969 and 1972, a total of 12 astronauts set foot on the dusty, crater-ridden surface of the moon. As part of these elaborate and media-effective projects, the participants collected various rock samples, carried out informative experiments, and last but not least, placed the flag of the United States on the lunar surface. However, as NASA is not a private company, but a U.S. federal agency financed by taxpayers' money, the size of the budget provided is always closely linked to the political objectives of the government in office. And if we go back to the era when preparations for the first manned moon landing was in full swing, we can quickly see why the U.S. government was prepared to provide NASA with generous financial injections at the time. It was well known that the world was in the throes of the Cold War at the time. The political and ideological conflict between the Western states and the nations of the Eastern Bloc was spreading to ever wider areas. In addition to proxy wars and countless covert intelligence operations, this also included attempts to outdo the hated adversary in every conceivable area. Ultimately, the clinch between East and West went beyond the borders of our earthly homeland and spilled over into the gigantic expanses of space. During the so-called space race, however, the USA initially had to cope with a series of painful defeats. On October 4, 1957, the Soviet Union succeeded in sending Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite, into orbit. A few months later, the dog Laika set off into space, before Yuri Gagarin became the first human outside the Earth on April 12, 1961. But as we know, the United States ultimately managed to recover from all these setbacks and inflict an even more painful humiliation on the adversary from the East. The successful Apollo 11 mission thus marked the celebrated end of the space race. Now that the Americans had finally managed to put the enemy in its place with their own achievements, the government could no longer justify to the population that it would continue to subsidize new moon landings with the same immense amounts of taxpayer money. Following the galactic success, public and political interest in further moon missions visibly waned, and so it came to pass that the last moon landing to date was completed just three years after the first. The Problem of Space Radiation In addition to the earthly money problems, there were also some natural complications in the realms of the moon that were associated with high health risks for the space travelers. These include space radiation in particular. As is well known, the Moon has an extremely sparse atmosphere in contrast to the Earth. As a result, the thin protective shell of the satellite is not able to sufficiently filter the incoming radiation. The outward and return flights are also associated with high radiation exposure for the astronauts. On average, a person on Earth is exposed to around 2 millisieverts of radiation per year. The average radiation levels recorded during the Apollo missions amounted to 0.5 millisieverts, and that's just after a few days in space. For example, the astronauts who took part in the Apollo 14 mission in February 1971 absorbed as much radiation in just nine days as a person on Earth would in just under six years. And although the consequences of this immense radiation exposure have not been conclusively investigated, most doctors assume that it is associated with high health risks for those affected. The cardiovascular system in particular is said to be affected by the prevailing radiation exposure. However, permanent cell damage and cancer are also among the possible effects of the extreme radiation levels. 
However, as only very few of the Apollo astronauts were examined in the long term afterwards, the potential consequential damage cannot be substantiated with large data sets. However, the radiation risk does not mean that no one will ever travel to the moon again. Quite the opposite. NASA is planning to return to Earth's constant companion in the near future as part of the Artemis program. However, the project, originally planned for 2024, has now been postponed until 2027 at the earliest. This is not in the least due to delays in the provision of a lander and the procurement of new spacesuits. The aim is to develop new suits with more effective radiation shields that minimize the health risk during long stays on the lunar surface. Whether these measures will make large-scale visits to the moon or even the construction of a permanent lunar station possible is still the subject of controversial debate among experts. How dangerous is the moon dust? Another problem that should not be underestimated is the natural composition of the moon. As is well known, the surface of the celestial body is largely covered by a dense layer of regolith, which is more commonly known as moon dust. However, these tiny particles are very different from their terrestrial counterparts. As there are no winds or rainfall on the moon, there is no natural influence that could smooth the dust grains. As a result, the microscopic particles have a razor-sharp structure, and as soon as they enter the respiratory tract, they can cause serious damage to the body. And unfortunately, it is unavoidable that the sharp-edged particles become lodged in the spacesuits and equipment used during the stay on the lunar surface. Consequently, the lunar dust particles inevitably end up inside the spaceship. They are 50 times thinner than human hair and can accumulate in the lungs over many months. In view of this, it is not surprising that all 12 people who have visited the satellite so far have subsequently complained of so-called lunar hay fever. The symptoms described ranged from sneezing attacks to blocked airways. However, doctors are convinced that inhaling moon dust over a longer period of time causes even more serious damage and can even lead to lung cancer. Brain cells could also be destroyed by the razor-sharp particles. Another reason why NASA has been reluctant to put a man on the moon for the last 50 years is the expense involved. And that doesn't just mean the costly development of a suitable spacecraft, but also the supply problem in particular. In detail, the Moon is almost 1,000 times further away from the Earth than the International Space Station. In order for a person to survive during a mission to the Moon, they need water and air treatment systems as well as equipment to generate electricity. However, as it is not possible to grow food in space with our current resources, all the food needed during the project must also be taken with us from the outset. Conversely, this means that the duration and therefore the potential success of a research mission is always limited by the capacity of the goods carried. The construction of a permanent lunar station complete with greenhouses could make this current problem a thing of the past, but it will probably be some time before that happens. What is the moon lie all about? However, there are people who have little to do with the events and problems described so far for the very simple reason that no one has actually been to the moon. A persistent conspiracy theory, but one that has not just been around since yesterday. Back in 1976, Bill Casing published the book, We Never Went to the Moon, in which he exposed the Apollo moon landings as supposed fakes. According to the book, the Americans' sole aim was to achieve a technological victory over the hated Soviet Union and, incidentally, to distract attention from the unspeakable suffering of the Vietnam War. To achieve these goals, the USA was prepared to use any means necessary, so they staged the moon landing in secret TV studios without further ado. Basically, this conspiracy theory is based on four main arguments. NASA lacked the technical knowledge to put a man on the moon in 1969. The moon photos show many confusing details. No craters caused by the lunar module's engines can be seen. And there is no wind on the moon that could have raised the U.S. flag. The less skeptical opposing side, however, points out that the supposedly deadly arguments can certainly be refuted. For example, the confusing and sometimes missing shadows in the photos can be explained by the moon's very high reflectivity. The assumption that the technical knowledge of the 1960s was not sufficient for a moon mission was in turn based on a false sense of superiority. In detail, the participants had even deliberately taken a great risk when they traveled to the moon, 
in order to be able to celebrate an even more significant success later. Furthermore, the radio waves transmitted during the first moon landing were not only received by the USA, but also by the Soviets. And then there are the 400 kilograms of lunar material collected during the Apollo program, which clearly proved the presence of a man on the moon. Other theories, on the other hand, are based on the conviction that the moon landing did indeed take place, but that the astronauts saw something that shook our world view to its very foundations. From Buzz Aldrin, who actually admitted to seeing an unidentified flying object, to Neil Armstrong, who is said to have seen a number of alien spaceships on the surface of the moon. The rumors are as fanciful as they are unconfirmed. And yet the proponents of these controversial claims know a very simple reason for the lack of visits to the moon in recent decades. NASA has simply not dared to return to the moon. But maybe you'll dare to press the subscribe button now. Become part of our community and never miss a new video again.